Hey guys, today we're going to make a soap dispenser in Onshape. We're going to be using the Onshape learning tutorials to do that. It's going to help us to learn about a new tool called the Loft tool. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the tutorial. This should be linked in today's folder. We're going to be in the exercise called Loft. So uh, we are going to create this shape for the bottle, the main body of the soap dispenser. We're not going to make the pump or the internal mechanisms today. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into Onshape. Make sure you're in the correct version of Onshape. You always want to log into myips.onshape.com. Uh, we're going to create a new document. I've already made one, but make sure that yours is titled according to our naming conventions. So it should be your class period and then your name and the description. So for this model, it's going to be 1A, Adams, Isaac, Soap Dispenser. Okay, so well, let's go ahead and start the tutorial here. So we're going to click Next Page. And the first thing that it's going to ask us to do is to begin a sketch on the top plane. So I'm going to go back over to Onshape here. I'm going to create a sketch. And I'm going to click on top in my feature menu. I'm going to press N on my keyboard to snap my view to the top plane. All right, let's see what's next. So we're going to create a rectangle whose center is coincident to the origin. Let's do that first. So I'm in sketch mode, and I'm going to use a rectangle, but I'm not going to use a corner rectangle. I'm going to use a center point rectangle. And we don't have any dimensions yet, so I'm just going to draw this rectangle at a random size, and that looks okay for now. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch two arcs as shown. So we're going to go up to our toolbar and we're going to use the three point arc. And I'm going to click on each of the top edges of the rectangle to draw that. Let's see, it says that the two arcs, so there's no other constraint given, so I'm just going to place it somewhere around there. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom. So that's what we've got so far. All right. Let's see what's next. All right. So now we are going to use a couple of constraints and we're going to add some construction lines. So it says we're going to make two horizontal lines of the rectangle construction lines. So we're going to turn these lines that we drew in the first place into construction lines. So in my menu here, I'm going to click on construction. Oop, actually, I'm still in the arc tool. So I've pressed escape. I'm no longer in any tools. Now I'm going to click on construction. And I can click on each of these lines to turn them into construction lines. Like so. Click on the line and then press the construction key. Okay. And then it says we're going to add a sketch fillet of eight and a half millimeters to all four corners. So we're going to use the fillet tool, which is different than the one that's in 3D mode. The sketch fillet tool is right here in the menu. It should be close to your trim tool. If not, you can always go to the search bar and look for sketch fillet. So with the sketch fillet, we're going to click on our lines here. On all sides, and then we're going to looks like it's only going to let me do two corners at a time. Let's try that again. So I'll do this corner first, and it's eight and a half millimeters. So I'm going to double click on this here and type in 8.5 mm. So that's one corner. I'm going to do the same to the other corners real quick. So click, e, click, click on the text, eight and a half millimeters, click and click. Click on the text, eight and a half millimeters. Click here, click on the text, eight and a half millimeters. Okay, the last thing that we need to do here is that we need to add an equal sketch constraint between our two arcs. So I'm going to go up here to the right side of my toolbar, which is where all of our constraints live, and I'm going to look for the equal sign. And this is very simple. All we have to do is just click on the top line and the bottom line of the arcs, 
and they should resize so that they are both the same. All right, so that is step three. Step four is to add dimensions. So we've already got the fillet dimensions, but now we need to add the width and height dimensions of the shape as defined from these, these white dots on the diagram here. And then we need to add the uh, radius of our arc. So the radius of the arc, let's do that first. It's 200 millimeters. So I'm going to switch over to dimension mode using the D key on my keyboard. And I'm going to click on this bottom arc. And I'm going to type in 200 millimeters. And if you've done this correctly, both the top and the bottom should resize. If that did not happen, then you need to go back a couple of seconds in the video and make sure that you've set the equal constraint to both of those arcs. All right, the next one, let's do the width here. So that's the 100 millimeters there. So I'm going to click on the white dot here. Make sure you click on this white dot. That is where the corner is. And we're going to define that as 100 millimeters. Pretty dramatic change in size there. And then the last one is from white dot to white dot, vertical dimension of 40 millimeters. So we've had a little bit of a resize there, but this is what it should look like. I'm just going to move some text around to make this look a little bit more visually uh, less gross. Looks kind of messed up. All right, that's a little easier to read, I think. So we can compare the size here to make sure that everything looks the same. Looks pretty similar to me. Again, our numbers are in inches here because that's our standard unit in Onshape. But if we double click on those numbers, we should be able to see that number in millimeters. All right. So our next step is to complete our sketch. I think I missed that part. Yep. We're going to finish the sketch that we've got here. Click the green check. And I'm just going to look at this from an isometric view here just to make sure that this looks correct. We've got these two dots over here. That's actually the center point of the arcs that we created um, because those are ginormous. So that's what that's for in case you wondered. It's totally fine. So this is actually going to be the bottom shape of our soap dispenser. All right, let's look at the next part here. So it says we're going to create a new reference plane. And it's going to be an offset uh, with a distance of 50 millimeters. So we're going to go over here to on shape and we are going to click on the plane option. And when we open it for the first time, it should be by default set to offset, which is what we want to use. So to create an offset, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the top view. And we're basically just going to make a new drawing surface that is a certain distance away from that. So you can see that I can draw this up here. And I've got another surface to draw on just like the front view or the top view or the right view. Okay, so this needs to be offset a total distance of 50 millimeters. So I'm going to type in 50 mm. And I am actually going to rename this, which you can do by just clicking on the little pencil next to plane one here. And I'm going to rename this middle plane just so that we know that that's going to be the middle of the soap dispenser. I'm also going to go ahead and hide my other planes for now, just so that I can see the top plane and the middle plane. The top plane, confusingly enough, is actually the bottom of the soap dispenser. So try to keep that straight. All right, so we've made our reference plane. It, there's a note here that just says to be sure that the new reference plane is above the top plane. And you can see that that is true in our diagram. Okay, so then we're going to create a new sketch on the middle plane and we're going to make an ellipse. And it says to be sure that the center of the ellipse is coincident to the origin and that the major axis is horizontal. So let's, let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to click on middle plane in my feature menu, just like I usually do. I'm going to press the N key on my keyboard to snap my view to overhead. Then I'm going to 
make sure that I use my ellipse tool correctly. So it should be long in the x direction and thin in the y direction. And we want to have that horizontal constraint pop up and our center point on the origin. So I'm going to click the drop down on my circle tool here. And I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. And I'm going to start by clicking on the origin. That's going to be my, my center point. Now, if it was vertically aligned, it would look like this. But that's not what they've asked us to do. They want it to be horizontally aligned. So we're going to rotate it until we get that snap right there, where we get that little text box that shows up with the line, the horizontal line symbol. Now, we haven't been given a dimension yet, so it doesn't particularly matter how big we draw this thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it for now. And then I have to place it in the y direction as well. You can see I have to add the minor axis here. So I'm just going to click right there. Now you can see that I can still type these measurements in. I haven't typed them in yet and I'm pretty sure that those dimensions are on the next slide. So instead of typing them in right away or clicking anywhere in Onshape, I'm actually going to go up to the instructions and I'm going to click on next slide so that I can grab those numbers real quick. So the width, the major axis diameter of this ellipse is 80 millimeters, and then the minor is 45, or the y direction. So let's go ahead and plug those in, 45 and 80. So this is going to be the widest one, so that'll be the 80 millimeters. And then this one will be the 40 millimeters. If you forgot to type those in, you can either use the dimension tool to add them, or you can alternatively just start over on the ellipse drawing and add them after you've clicked twice for your major and minor axis. All right, before I forget, I'm going to press the escape key to get out of my ellipse tool here, just so that I don't accidentally drop 80,000 ellipses on my diagram. Let's click on next. Well, sorry, the next step is to complete the sketch. So that is our middle plane. And you can see that that's just floating there in the air. Don't worry, we'll connect it in a minute. All right, now we're going to create one last reference plane, and it's going to be offset from the top plane, not the middle plane, from the top plane, uh, a total distance of 125 millimeters. So we're going to again use the plane tool. It's going to be offset from the top plane and the distance was 125 millimeters. The only thing that needs to be true is that we make sure that that very top plane is above the top plane and not below it. So I'm actually going to call this tippy top just so that I know that it's the very top of the soap dispenser as opposed to the top view. Okay. So then we're going to go in and we're going to use the circle tool to sketch a circle. We just got to make sure that it's coincident with the origin. So I'll go back to here and I'll create a new sketch on the top plane. Press N to snap to my view. Zoom in just a little bit. Then I'm going to go to my center point circle tool. And I'm just going to drop a circle on the origin here. Let's see how big that circle is supposed to be. Looks like it needs to have a diameter of 40 millimeters. So let's type in 40 mm here. You can also type it in with the dimension tool if you forget to do that after you drop the shape. We'll finish the sketch. And this is what we should have so far. So hopefully you're kind of getting an idea of what this is going to look like at the end by what you can see from these three shapes. Uh, just a friendly reminder though, as you're looking at these sketches, I meant to mention this earlier, make sure that all of your sketches are fully constrained, which means that all of your lines are black. You should not have any blue lines at this point. All right, so let's look at the next step in Onshape. So we're going to use the loft command. Oh, this is the last part, guys. So in Onshape, we're going to look for the loft tool, which is right here. And all you're going to do is you're just going to click on each of your shapes one at a time. So we're going to start on the bottom. And we're going to click on the middle. 
and then we'll click on the top. And you should see that as you go up, that there is a smooth connection between those shapes. Let me make sure that we've got everything to match the tutorial here. So it says click on the three profiles from bottom to top. This adds each sketch region to the profile selection in the dialog box and creates the loft feature. Always add your profiles in positional order and click on a, sim on a similar location when selecting each profile. Uh, yeah, so as you can see here, these surfaces are pretty smooth, and that's because we did this in the correct orientation. If you went from top to bottom, it might not work as well. Okay, and we're done. So I'll go ahead and finish this loft. I'll hide my planes here, and this is what our completed model should look like. So you can see that we've got a rough shape of a plastic bottle. And that is exactly what the tutorial asked us to make. So we're done. So make sure that you submit this assignment at the end of class. And if you need any help, feel free to shoot me a message. I'll see you guys in the next video.